I don't want to freak anyone out, but what is that in front of us? HMS Duncan is a billion pound warship. Northside, Northside. On a brand new mission. I'm closing my position, clarify your intentions. You've seen the news, you know what's going on. Britain is sending a second warship to the Gulf as tensions rise. This is what we're here for. This Royal Navy destroyer is packed with the most advanced weaponry in the world. Now, a Sea Viper missile system is secret. By the time they're 50 feet above the ground, they're going three, four times the speed of sound. <laughs> but 260 men and women also call it home. I'm like a married couple, but with no benefits whatsoever. So hopefully in the summer I'll come back. I love you. With exclusive access, our cameras have been invited back for Duncan's dramatic new seven-month deployment. Something's about to happen. It is a bit of a tense time. Illuminate contact at 390. <laughs> to be going to war. It is scary. As the crew joined the fight to eradicate ISIS in Iraq and Syria. This is as close as you get to being on the front line. Get ready for the worst scenario. Your future at the minute is not certain. And they find themselves at the heart of an international crisis. We are not here to start a war with Iraq. We might be here to finish one. This is as serious as it gets. It's early March, and HMS Duncan is in port. This has got to be the dream, isn't it? To get your name painted in gold on one of Her Majesty's ships. This may be in a museum one day. Tom Trent has just become the new captain. How are you all right? Morning. I think I'm a typical modern naval captain. There's no space these days for the old-style, authoritarian-type approach. Morning. <laughs> Maybe I might come across as a bit too nice. Thanks, How you doing? Right. Yeah, good, thanks because I probably, deep down, want people to like me. Hey, you right. But need to find those opportunities to demonstrate the hard edge. Is it illegal haircuts? <laughs> Stop. Come back here. Is that illegal haircuts? There's only one option. It all has to come off. The captain's about to lead HMS Duncan on a seven-month deployment, but they're running late. There's a bit of frustration, I think. I just want to get going. Mechanical issues have delayed the ship by three weeks. They've just been given the green light to sail. We've got a plan. It now falls on me to tell the, tell the troops. I really want to tell them as quickly as I can. Clear lower deck. Clear lower deck. All ship company, monster in the hangar. Oh, Good evening, all. Right. You're starting to get to know me now, and I think most of you are realising that, that if I do know stuff, I'm going to tell you. We're going to deploy the ship Friday. There's a slight issue here. We're going to be a little bit late. So we're going to have to kind of work pretty hard and fast, then get out the door, OK? The crew now have just 36 hours to get the ship ready. Happy? Crack on. Thanks very much. Company! Oh! Everyone's keen to go. They want to get going, so do I. How are you on, Yeah, I'm desperate to get out of this deployment. Desperate! You've got your deployment haircut on. <laughs> We've got hours now until we sail. Hello, Hello. 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 how's it going? Welcome back. Just to going around the department, making sure that deadlines are being adhered to. Ellen Laird is Duncan's logistics officer. Are you all ready to go? Yeah. Yeah. It's her job to get the ship ready to sail tomorrow. How many pallets of potatoes would you say we're going to get? Ten. About ten pallets of yeah. potatoes, so. About £30,000 worth of stores coming on today. Everybody use spare, then. Start a chain. We'll you sail with about 80 there, days' worth of food for 260 Every people. Water. That's your baked beans. Among the boxes and containers are 52,000 tea bags, 4,000 chickens and enough milk to fill 25 bathtubs. That will be full before we sail. And we essentially eat our way through the store on deployment. They reckon an army marches on its stomach and a navy certainly sails on it. I enjoy this dynamic. 
I'm like a swan, you see. You look peaceful and graceful, but you can't see my legs doing that underneath. <laughs> right. The delayed deployment means some of the crew have been allowed to say a final goodbye to family and friends. Most important thing for the deployment, that be PlayStation. 20-year-old Connor Moore has been in the Navy for 18 months, but the next seven will be the longest he's ever been away from home. Definitely made the right decision to join the Navy. I, I didn't think there was anything here for me, and I thought, I thought about joining the Army, I mean, one way and having any of it. Did you find your passport? Yeah, it's in my bag now. That's it. What else? What are you checking? My passport. I feel like I've got to go through this routine every time he goes back. <sighs> I definitely put it in here. It's always something, isn't the Connor, that you forget? Definitely put it in my bag. I'm going to check your bedroom. I come from a military family, so I've always been all for it, really. Yeah, your mum will find it eventually. In a sock drawer upstairs. Why is it in there? <laughs> she had a few cries about me going away. But the first couple of months will be hard. Just see how my mum, mum handles yeah, it. Well. And ring every single opportunity. Yeah, well. Love your loads. Yeah, love you. Drive safe. See you later. Ta ra, love, love ya. The following day, and with everyone and everything on board... Fall in properly. Take charge of yourself. HMS Duncan is ready to set sail. This is it. That bit we've all been preparing for, and off we go. Go line, let go, all line. Starboard leader ahead, 4 zero. There's a bit of adrenaline every time you take a ship to sea. The chips, stay 262. Sort of raw excitement as well, because it's just really good fun. It's great. Love Wagamama's now. Bye, English food, bye. Even... Hang on, Wagamama's, what is that? I don't know. Nav's just straight to the gap. Smile away, boys, smile away. <laughs> Now at sea, the focus turns to what lies ahead. Roger, ship has correct all round. The first part of the mission is going to be our critical contribution to Operation Inherent Resolve. Operation Inherent Resolve is Duncan's most challenging mission to date. It will take her deep into the Mediterranean Sea, to the coastline of Syria, where she'll join forces with a French aircraft carrier. Together, their goal is to help eradicate the last remnants of ISIS. Duncan's going to play her part in strike missions into Syria to defeat ISIS. Uh, it's a really, really important operation to defeat terrorism. HMS Duncan is heading for the front line of the war on terror. HMS Duncan is on her way to the Mediterranean. So far, it's not been a comfortable trip. Past two nights, we haven't got any sleep. Going through the Bay Biscay, the swells were massive, so everyone was rocking side to side. Connor Moore is adjusting to life at sea. I've got to shave every day, I mean, I can't even really grow a beard. Well, if you don't shave every day, you get picked up, so... And I've been picked up a few times and I haven't shaved, so... There's six of us in our cabin, and it's sound, to be honest. Decorators are on like everyone else. We put all the scarves up and then all the flags. This is Connor's first full deployment 
after 18 months in training. Yes. Harry? Yeah, tired. Thank you, dude. <laughs> it's like the Navy's changed me in the sense of be a bit more mature. To be fair, people will be saying, oh, you're not mature, but my mum says I am, so I am. No, I got peer pressure. <laughs> just holding, like, conversations. Know what to say and what not to say now, where I was just so copy when I was younger. So I should be out of it. For the next seven months, HMS Duncan is home to 260 men and women, including a doctor. You're looking much better, and that's really good. A policeman and even a vicar. I'm just going to do a Bible reading. Knock, knock. Yeah, then you're right. The ship is a community, it's a city afloat. Captain Tom Trent conducts daily rounds to check in with his crew. Right, so we're going to the ship control centre. Now, L.E.T. Tong, his dad was a lieutenant when I was lieutenant H.M.S. Kent. That's right, yeah. Good. Right, thanks, fellas. We'll push on. Ah, here we are. Big laundry day. Morning. How you doing, all right? Busy day? Okay. The laundry must wash and iron an average of 100 shirts, 75 sets of overalls and 200 socks each day. That's so much. All manner of people working, hopefully. That's his office and his sleeping quarters. Right, get back to work. Right, shall don my protective headgear. See the chefs. Yes, Chef Mansell, what's happening? The kitchen, known as the galley, feeds the whole crew, producing around 1,000 plates of food a day. One of the challenges for the galley is three times a day, they're turning out phenomenal amounts of grub. It's quite a lot. We are a small team. Eight chefs cook round the clock to cater for the crew. And it's pretty relentless, isn't it? Yeah. Although you lot seem to enjoy it, most of you. Is that right, isn't it? Yeah. Ooh, cheesecake. Who's going to win now, then? Ajax. Nah. But I'm a bad loser. Yeah. But I'm an even worse winner. <laughs> <laughs> it's Connor's first major deployment. It's dead satisfying, man. And he's already struggling with homesickness. I have him, I'm not like... Like, I haven't, I haven't like, got upset or anything. Like, I'm not, I'm, not that, I'm not that bad, but, like, just some days where it's just, like, oh, I just want to be at home, just, just away from everyone else. Shall I close that door after? I miss my mum, my dad, my stepdad, my, my little brother, and my dog. I actually forgot that we had a dog, cos we, we've only had him for a year, and my mum sent me a picture of him, and I generally forgot we had a dog. Yeah, I got that way. Ready for your command brief. Excellent. Another of the captain's core jobs is to brief his senior officers about Duncan's latest mission. Evening all. Thank you. Rex, please. Thanks. Oh, that's better. Evening, sir. Welcome to your command brief, starting with the Met. Our next 24 hours, we're expecting light and variable winds overnight. As you can see, low sea states and low significant uh, wave height throughout Thursday. HMS Duncan is on her way to the coast of Syria, where she'll be helping the French aircraft carrier, Charles de Gaulle. The carriers never go round on their own, because they would effectively be a target, because they are quite, let's be honest, a big target. If the aircraft carrier gets taken out, then you can't achieve the mission. So that's where we slot in. Duncan's role is to use her cutting-edge radar to help protect the French carrier and her jets as they launch strikes on what remains of ISIS in Iraq and Syria. Because at the end of the day, there's no point having a carrier unless you're going to use it. The French are using it in live operations against ISIS. What HMS Duncan brings to Opera Inherent Resolve is best radar, the best ship, the best ship's company. So that's it. Happy? Excited? <coughs> if you're not, you're in the wrong place. <laughs> Oh, 
how I love the Navy, and all my friends and family know that. There are very few days when I think, life jacket on, I'm out of it. Joe Peacock is Duncan's most senior female warfare officer. I'm just having a bit of time to myself. It's really interesting what, like, 20, 30 minutes of doing something different that's a bit... I want to say normal, but I'm stood on a cable deck with a saxophone in my hand, so I'm not sure this is normal. You know what I mean? Something that's really, like... Well, it's normal for me, and it's what I do, you know. In order to become the top brass, she needs to get her command qualification. Hello. Hello, sir. To one day become captain of her own ship. What you now need to do is get your command qualifications done, which which, you know, are coming up rapidly. At end of April. End of yeah. April. So you need to build experience because there just ain't no substitute for experience. Joe will be given temporary command of HMS Duncan in just a few days' time to see if she's got what it takes. Sometimes I feel quite a bit of pressure, but I think that's part of it, how you respond to pressure. You know, having quite high expectations for myself. and I do like to do well. I do get annoyed at myself when I don't. Up on deck, preparations for the mission are underway. Connor Moore is testing one of Duncan's deadliest weapons, the Phalanx anti-air gun. He left school at 16 and worked in McDonald's for two years before signing up. It's literally from, like, the age of nine, I, I always wanted to join the military. I never really thought about, or oh, if I fail, what I'm going to do. Didn't actually have a, a backup plan. It was putting all of my eggs into one basket. As a trainee weapons engineer, Connor's never used this gun with live ammunition. To progress his career, there can be no slip-ups. We've only just loaded 500 rounds, but far too unqualified to shoot it myself. <laughs> I'm a bit too immature for that. All the shit jobs I'll do, all the cool jobs I'll leave to the maturer people in the ship. <laughs> this is Connor's only chance to get it right. Next time, the gun might be needed to fire at an enemy target. Go on, approve, Phalanx. Call parts, warning shots. The gun works first time. Firing 75 bullets a second. And Connor can breathe a sigh of relief. I got the shock of my life. Like, I didn't realise how loud it was going to be, to be honest. It was good. Quite, uh, quite exciting, to be honest. HMS Duncan is now off the coast of Crete, less than 24 hours away from her rendezvous with the Charles de Gaulle. But 24-year-old Luke Davis has other priorities on his mind. I've been married to Jenny for two years, nearly, in April. We're expecting our first baby in April as well now, just before our anniversary. The reason I joined the Navy originally was because we decided not to have children due to the fact that there was complications um, and then, lo and behold, as soon as I joined the Navy, we are now expecting. It's the hardest thing I've had to do is leave her at home. Luke's baby is due in early April. The plan at the moment is to get home a few days before the expected date and should hopefully make it as long as it uh, doesn't come a bit early. So I'm hoping that'll be a fun but fair dad. <laughs> A member of the crew is missing. Been uh, alerted to a man overboard. 
trying to find out what, what's happened. One of Duncan's seamen, Graham Riddle, has been knocked into the sea by a dangling rope. <laughs> it's not known if he's injured. He's spotted. The man has been recovered by our speedboat and is in the speedboat. Bringing him back in board now to, to assess him. We've got the first aiders on hand. It's pretty dressed, though. Is it? Do I check in, please? Yeah. Graham is met by the ship's doctor. Yeah, it's beeping it, so yeah. You're right. I'm fine, so yeah. You're just beeping right. you. Steaming back, to be honest. That's how bad. If you um, if you notice any love, then I've been in about seven and a half years. This is the first time I've ever experienced a, a real man overboard. It's a little bit, that's all that's left. It's really nice to see that the training actually pays off. HMS Duncan is getting closer to the coast of Syria. The mission is about to get more complex. I will brief the warship's company just to explain what's coming in the next few days. FX Morel is a French naval officer living on Duncan as part of a Navy exchange program. I'm going to uh, brief you on the mission that we are going to conduct. His bosses have asked him to reveal more information about Operation Inherent Resolve. The mission is to defeat ISIS in Iraq and Syria. In terms of uh, threat, Russia, they are present. Uh, they will remain in close vicinity. They will try to get intelligence, see how we operate, how good we are. It is likely that if we uh, do not uh, protect correctly the carrier, they will exploit our shortfalls to hamper the mission. Thank you for news your of attention. Russian warships in the area is a surprise to the crew. I don't know, I, I don't know what to expect. I hope something goes on in Syria. HMS Duncan must now be ready for anything. HMS Duncan is in the eastern Mediterranean, just hours from Syrian waters. Today is Lieutenant Joe Peacock's last opportunity to earn her command spurs. She's taking temporary charge of the entire ship. It's just a bit of responsibility. So, for instance, if you know stuff goes wrong quickly, it'll come to me before it goes to the captain. This will be a tough test for the 27-year-old, but vital if she's to become a captain herself. I feel a bit sick, so I'm a bit nervous. Fine. British please, I'll watch. Captain Tom Trent is stepping to one side for the entire day. So it's absolutely your train set for 24 hours. Obviously, I'm still in command, but you'll be executing the, the serious function, as it were. But I want you to use your brain to try and solve the problems. Because in short order, you will probably be sitting in one of these chairs for real as the captain. Your conduct. I have conduct. Um, <laughs> SG-1 has assumed conduct. While in temporary command, Joe has the honour of sitting in the captain's chair on the bridge. She's now responsible for all 260 crew, as well as the billion-pound warship. I don't want to freak anyone out, but what is that in front of us? <laughs> I was going to say, it looks like an oil rig. We've actually driven to it, haven't we? How far away is it, three? Ten miles, 11 miles? 11 now. <laughs> If you look at people like Lieutenant Peacock, pressure's good. It's important that people are exposed to a bit of pressure. Thank you very much. You won't be a captain if you don't get qualified. 
So can anyone, like, a lieutenant and above have conduct, or is it just certain nominated people? So to actually have conduct, you have to have done, like, a command, a set of a command exams. I don't want to do it. I don't want that kind of responsibility. I'm all right. That's too much for me. And see, close the ship. On the eve of their rendezvous with the Charles de Gaulle, right, good morning, all. Captain Tom Trent gathers his senior warfare officers in his cabin for a tactical discussion. So we're going to talk about some Charles de Gaulle operating procedures. With news of several Russian warships nearby, it's essential the crew know the rules of engagement. So do you think we're going to become the primary shotgun relatively close in. Um, I think that is what will happen. And uh, we screen the Russian unit to maintain 10 nautical miles between the carrier and the Russian unit. 10 miles from the carrier to, the, to a potential foe. The Charles de Gaulle has asked the Russian warships to stay 10 miles away. It will be Duncan's job to make sure they comply. Legally, we've got no means to stop them. What could you actually do in that position? A Russian drives towards carrier. If I may just the, give the French point of view. Yeah. Now, you might not be extremely comfortable with uh, with this. Yeah. We'll drive the ship to make uh, the Russian unit in an uncomfortable position as well. That sounds about right. Playing a game of chicken with the Russians in a billion pound warship is a risky tactic, but could be their best option. Because if he is out to antagonise, then, then, then they'll do that. Then that will have an effect on, potentially have an effect on operations. There's a huge strategic game going on here with Russia. It's down to HMS Duncan to make sure that we play our part absolutely professionally and correctly. It's about reassuring our partners and it's about not antagonising Russia, but it is about showing strength. The crew are on standby to answer any move Russia makes. Meanwhile, below decks, there's a pressing personal issue. It is natural to have a bit of anxiety, and uh, don't worry, it is your first, first child. There's been an urgent message from home for father-to-be Luke Davis. So my wife's been admitted into hospital due to early onset preeclampsia. It's the only cure for it is to induce the labor early. She's in the best place for her, in the hospitals or other places. You know. I am really hoping to get home for the birth. I'm not sure if I will or not yet. It's very much in the air. Might be a couple of hours hanging around now. So just, you know, relax. The bitch is here, we're here, and if you need it, then then. Hello. So I've just yeah. chatted to E.T. Davis, and yep. I've got all his details. Logistics officer Ellen Laird is liaising with Luke's family in the UK looking at options to get him home for the birth. I do believe that it could go to C-section, so if yeah. that's the case, then we're clearly looking at, you know, the next 12 to 24 hours of baby being yeah. born. It makes sense whichever place they can get the flight from back to the UK quickest is the one that we should go yeah. for. It's north to Suda tonight, when it be about a midnight land on. Yep. Uh, or Cyprus first flight tomorrow. Yes. Cool. Yeah. Happy days, everyone. Let's get on. The crew must now choose between getting to the French aircraft carrier as soon as possible or getting Luke home. The nearest airport is behind them in Crete, but would involve turning back and delaying the mission. The airport in Cyprus is roughly on course to the Charles de Gaulle, but would mean a later flight for Luke. Captain's keen to get um, him home as soon as possible. We're currently at sea. As Joe Peacock is still in temporary command, the final decision will fall to her. This is a really important opportunity for Lieutenant Peacock. She's actually got a, a classic conundrum to solve here. That's what I'm a decision between Crete and Cyprus must be made quickly. Well, well, I'll sit in the background and listen in. So, we've just come off the phone. Docs have taken the decision to induce Mr Davis tonight. It's not to suggest that she's in severe danger, but they wouldn't want to um, uh, understate the procedure. We've worked through some options. I've got two options for you. One that's out of Crete tonight, Cyprus tomorrow. Looking at those two options, Crete feels like a quicker option just because it's closer and we'd be able to get the guy off. If we could fly tonight and get into Crete, he would land into London Heathrow at 11.05. 
If we go for the Cyprus option, that lands on between 19, 20 hundred tomorrow evening. Flying from Crete would get Luke home around seven hours ahead of a flight from Cyprus. But Duncan would then be 10 hours late for the Charles de Gaulle. But equally, I'll, I'll mention that Cyprus keeps us on task, so I think the Cyprus option would okay. be my recommendation. Now, in terms of time and fuel, would you be content for us to be getting all the way over to Cyprus? Yeah, absolutely. So we're already doing 24 knots. Due to get there just before sunrise. Yeah, Cyprus is my preference to offer a number of those reasons. <clears throat> Luke will be taken to Cyprus at first light. About an hour's time, I'll have all the flight details. We're going to try and get the MT, so military transport, to meet you and put you through customs a bit quicker than normal. Like, but do not forget your passport and try and just take a hand luggage only. Oh, okay. yeah, all right, good luck. Take care of yourself. Thank you, Mum. And we'll see you uh, when it's all done. Yeah. Good luck. All right, it. thank you. All right. One of my favourite things about the Navy, when stuff's actually got to happen, it does happen. It doesn't matter that it's, what, five to midnight now, and a lot of people are going to have to get up at five to, you know, get this, get this guy home to his wife and, and little baby. You know, if it's got to happen, it's got to happen. At 6 a.m., Duncan is now in range of Cyprus. The ship's helicopter is being prepared to take Luke ashore. Looking at launch in 29 minutes. Just keep a good look out on the air lane. It's Roger. It's south of us, quite a few miles. Uh, Checkpoint starboard air lanes. True wind is 350 at 9 knots, QNH 1018. If all goes to plan, Luke Davis will be by his wife's side in the next 12 hours. Just had actual wildcats then. <laughs> All positions at AC Vantage now airborne to port with four POB, two hours endurance, endurance time 0902 Charlie. No weapons, their command intentions are to conduct PAX transfer in Agra Siri. As the helicopter leaves, Joe's day in charge has come to an end. Right, well done, I have conduct. Congratulations, 24 so. hours done safely. Right, please, Captain has resumed conduct. That's good, really good. I'm really pleased that went. I was quite, quite lucky to have had that opportunity to pretend to be the captain on a Type 45 for 24 hours um, when there's actually stuff going on as well. So, yeah, I've really enjoyed it. I think she's done really well. I can make a judgment on whether I think she's got the right stuff. And it's clear to me she's got it in absolute spades. After travelling over 3,000 miles. Excellent. There's the objective right there. The French aircraft carrier, Charles de Gaulle, is finally in sight. It's brilliant. It's a dream. Bloody hard work to get here, and here we are. We're going to drop round into our patrol sector and start. Crack on. Simple as that. Do you need to be aiming over there, shipmate? Port 10, steer 110. Let's get it to a mile max, OK? HMS Duncan is going to become the carrier's closest escort. But two Russian warships have made it to the French aircraft carrier first and are now stalking its every move. There's a couple of Russian contacts out to the east. The carrier's quite a big bit of kit. There's absolutely no question that Russians would be interested in coming to have a look. We just need to make sure that it's absolutely clear when that behaviour may be seen as threatening. Maintaining station on the Charles de Gaulle, watching what the air activity is doing. Eyes and ears for the option, yeah? 
the Charles de Gaulle wants the Russian ships to stay well away. If they get too close, they could interfere with the mission. We're stationed within a protective area around the aircraft carrier. There's an agreement with the, with the Russians that they'll stay outside of 10 miles. So the whole point of this agreed exclusion zone around the aircraft carrier is to allow her to maneuver into wind, to generate that wind across the deck so she can launch jets. My job in Duncan and the, and the team's job is to make sure that that 10 mile boundary is maintained. So this is critical. All Russian activity is being monitored deep inside the ship, in Duncan's operations room. But at the moment there are, there's the Charles de Gaulle, the two Russians shadowing the carrier strike group. OK. Principal Warfare Officer Ben Dorrington is tracking the two Russian warships, the Severomorsk and the Admiral Essen. Right, so oh. Essen. Link received and ties in as being reported by the foreband. Yeah. Several more she seems to have gone north. What's their behaviour been? At the moment, it seems yeah, compliant pra and practical and compliant at 10 miles. Ben is ensuring the Russians keep outside of a 10 mile exclusion zone. He's manoeuvred the ship in between the aircraft carrier and both the Severomorsk and the Admiral Essen, using Duncan itself as a barrier. So it's just establishing what's normal and establishing some patterns of life, and then we can react when things are, are a little less normal. Duncan is well established uh, in sector on the Charles de Gaulle. She's planning to continue to conduct a live operation over the coming days, and we'll endeavour to keep you updated with as much information as possible. The question on everyone's mind now is what will Russia do next? HMS Duncan is now off the coast of Syria, in position to protect the French aircraft carrier, Charles de Gaulle. Port 35. But Russian warships are starting to encroach. The Russian frigate this morning started to close the task group. Principal Warfare Officer Ben Dorrington has been watching the Russians dip in and out of the 10-mile exclusion zone all night. So we've had a little bit of cat and mouse and ultimately she's encroached within that, that bubble that the, that the carrier would, would rather keep free to conduct its own operations. Our task is to um, effectively form a backstop between the, the carrier uh, and, um, and the Severomorsk, so I think everybody understands what each other's roles are. Just playing the game. Just have a think. Captain Tom Trent needs to decide how to respond to the Russians. There's been a lot of activity straight away. You know, there's some discussion about their range to the carrier. If there's an absolute direct alteration towards the carrier and increase in speed, then that's a very different story. While Russian intentions are unclear, the captain can't take any chances. He moves Duncan to action stations, so the crew are ready to defend themselves. Charles de Gaulle Carrier Strike Group is already conducting strikes on ISIS targets ashore in Iraq and Syria as part of Operation Inherent Resolve. This is a complex, fast-moving environment. There is a requirement to raise our readiness states and go to action stations. Hands to action stations, hands to action stations. Assume CBR and DC state one condition completely. Battle bag ought to be carried. Anti flash is to be carried in your battle bag. Executive Warrant Officer Martin Watson. Sleeves, guys and girls. Is reassuring the crew. Many of them have never faced a threat like this before. This part of the world where we are at the moment, we want to be ready for any eventuality, uh, and you never know what's going to happen. We're just raising the readiness for the ship. We're closing down water integrity. We're we'll mustering all our firefighting equipment, mustering all our flood and damage control equipment, and just making sure that we're ready to go if anything does happen. 
So all I'm doing now is just checking everybody's accommodation, uh, making sure that they're all fully secure. If we did, you know, God forbid, take any kind of damage, something could come through this bulkhead. to maintain a safety buffer between the, the Russian forces and the carriers. There is a little bit of doubt with regards to the safety. The French won't begin their strikes on ISIS until the Russian ships are outside of 10 miles. She's going to, she's at 11 miles. So she's pointing that way. She's going to come around and do Yeah, but that. she's only going to go about 20 degrees from where she is. By changing Duncan's course, Ben Dorrington is hoping to push the Russian ships further away, allowing the French jets the chance to take off. He's not going to go for another 25 minutes. Right. So you, what you want her to do is start steaming south. What, the Severomorsk? Yeah. Yeah. So I, want, I want to keep the Severomorsk wet east and drive her as, as the carrier goes up. I want the Severomorsk to come down back into our sector. On the bridge, all eyes are on the Russians to see if they move back. CPA, one more, two minutes, though. Very good. But do stay on top of your 360. It's working. Duncan has outmaneuvered the Russians, giving the French the space they need to begin airstrikes against ISIS. This is our core job, and that is to ensure that the carrier is able to carry on with their strike operations unhindered by anybody. There is a moment when you just have to remind yourself that a brave soul is flying up over enemy territory to do harm to others, and I think it's something that, that we spend a lot of time considering, actually. But this mission has only just begun. Next time. All positions listening. The airstrikes on ISIS ramp up. Everything red is ISIS. Now there is no red. FC1, Roger. Lieutenant Joe Peacock's career is on the line. I'm a strong, confident navigator. I will not hit any of these ships. This information is not, I repeat, not to leave the ship under any circumstances. And new top secret orders reach the ship. And the largest of the rebel groups has initiated a push. The broad intent is to go alongside and extract 33 military personnel. <laughs>